All right, so to start this lesson off, I'd like to remove all of the breakpoints in this file except for the first one on line number one. So right here on line number seven, I'm going to click the red button, remove it. You should only have one red dot here on line number one. Let's try one more time running our program with the run button. All right, and as we saw in the previous lesson, we can use the step over button to move to the next line of execution in the current scope, in the current context. So if I press it once, we're gonna move to the declaration of the do fun stuff function on line number three. Then we're gonna move to line number 10 before it executes. And we saw in the previous lesson that if I pressed step over again, we would then move to line number 11. Now, what if I actually wanted to go into the do fun stuff function? What if I actually wanted to dive into line number four, for example, or line number five? Well, one option, of course, is to use a breakpoint, at which, at which point the breakpoint will automatically catch that and pause the program at that state. But if we wanna do so with our controls right here, we can use the third button from the left, which is called step into. So what step into does is it steps into another scope, a lower level scope. Right now, our scope is the file. We are executing line number 10. It's available on the top level of the file. In order for the program to continue running, Python needs to evaluate the right side of the equal sign first, which means it needs to execute do fun stuff, the function, which means it needs to run through the function body of four through eight, lines four through eight. So if I press step into, what we're actually going to do is dive into the next execution context, the next line on the nested scope. So when I press step into, instead of going to line 11, which is what step over would do, step into is going to move to line number four. And it's gonna bring us to that scope. So now because we're in the nested function scope, the same rules apply as in the previous lesson. If I do something like step over, it's gonna to move to the next line in that current scope in my function body. Okay, so let's say I'm running through the do fun stuff function and I see that everything looks as I'd like and I don't want to go through the rest of the code. Imagine that do fun stuff has a hundred lines of code instead of four. I don't wanna to have to press step over a hundred more times to get back to line number 10 or whatever it would be the equivalent line in that long file. So right next to step into, you're going to see step out. What that is going to do is to move back up to the scope above. It's important to remember that step out does not mean rewind. It does not mean go back in time. It does not mean go back before the execution of do fun stuff. What it means is execute the remainder of the scope that you're in and then go back to the higher level. So if I press this step out button, we're gonna go back to line number 10 but this is actually the moment of execution where do fun stuff has already returned a value of 25. We can see right here, it says the return of do fun stuff is 25. So the moment of execution we're in right now is the right side of the equal sign has been evaluated and we're about to assign the final value variable to line 25, which means that do fun stuff has finished running. Right When we stepped out, it's not like we re reverted. It's not like we went back in time. The Function is going to continue running, it's gonna finish, but instead of proceeding to the next line in the function scope, the step out is going to bring us back up to the higher scope at the next available moment of being paused, right? So we were on line number six or seven, we pressed step out, which means we ran through the remaining lines of code and do fun stuff, and now we're back on the outer scope, which is the file scope, all right? So one more time, I'm gonna press the step over button to move to line number 11. If I press either step over at this point or continue, we would finish up the file and nothing else would happen. But let's say I want to go into do fun stuff at this point. It's a nested scope. I want to step into a lower level scope. In order to do that, we wanna target this button. You can see it's an arrow pointing down, which means go down, go one level deeper, one layer deeper. And that's gonna step into the nested scope, which is the function scope, right? And if, for example, we were invoking another function in the body of do fun stuff and we wanted to go into that body, we can continue to repeat the logic to step into. We can go as many levels deep as we want to to get to whatever is the context that is being executed, all right? So once we're in the do fun stuff function, we can execute step over to move line by line. 
And if we ever want to go back to the outer scope, we can do step out. That's going to bring us back up. And remember, at this point, do fun stuff has finished calculating. It's going to tell us a return value of 25. So the only thing left to do in this file is to print that value of 25. So at this point, any of these commands should execute the exact same thing or should provide the exact same output, either continue or step over. We'll do that final print function call, print out the value of 25 right here, and that completes the program. All right, so that is all there is to cover as far as the available options. There's two more that I forgot, but they should be pretty simple. This uh, red uh, square on the right simply means stop, which means it's going to stop the entire execution period, you know, stop the file from running. And this one, which is the green restart, is going to restart execution from the very top of the file. So it's going to clear all the memory, clear all the declared variables, just as if you're, you know, starting this file from scratch completely. So these should be pretty simple to understand. These are the four complex tricky ones, but hopefully these lessons have given you a better understanding of how they work. Continue is going to go to the next breakpoint. Step over is going to go to the next line in the current scope, in the current execution context. Step into will move into a nested execution context, into a nested scope, at which point you can then combine it with step over to move line by line. While step out will move outwards, upwards into the higher level scope, into the higher level execution context. For example, moving from a function to the file or moving from a deeply nested function to its parent function, et cetera. One level higher. Now again, this step out does not mean rewind. It does not mean revert. It just means finish up the current scopes operation and bring me back to the higher level scopes so I don't have to walk through the remaining lines in the current scope manually, all right? Then of course restart, and then of course stop, all right? So we saw how this works with a really simple, silly example. In the very next lesson, we'll see how we can use debugging to actually work through a sample problem.